Welcome to this tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at the metric system. Now many of you will have heard terminology such as microscopic, nanoparticles, terabytes and even the stretch if you like of the logic a mega sale. Now all these terms have metric prefixes so let's see if we can make some sense. So a metric system is internationally adopted using the decimal system of measurement. Now as you know deci is to do with 10 so we know that the decimal counting system or our currency even is based upon ones, tens, hundreds, thousands and ten thousands etc. And when you think about it a 10 is 10 to the power of 1, a hundreds 10 to the power of 2, thousands 10 to the power of 3 and ten thousands 10 to the power of 4 and ones is really just 10 to the zero. So that's a, if you like, a decimal system looking at units of ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and ten thousands. In fact, our number counting system is based on this. The number five is based on there's no thousands, no hundreds, no tens, one lot of, sorry, five lots of ones, it's a five. The number 32 has no thousands, no hundreds, three tens, and two ones, so th and so forth, up to when I've got four in the thousands columns, six in the hundreds, ones in the tens, and threes in the ones, that's the number 4613. We've used this system for quite some time. Just out of interest, you might want to look up the binary number counting system, which is a base 2 rather than a base 10. So you have the decimal system and the binary system, an interesting way in which you can count. But that's for another video. So let's look, if we're looking at the metric measurement of systems, well, we've got base units that we use in most of our everyday measurements and in fact in the science lab. So for example, length is measured in meters, mass is measured in grams, time is measured in seconds, current in amps, and voltage in volts, and there's many, many more. Let's have a look now at a scale. So traditionally the metric scale, when we look at the prefix, the names we use, such as your milli, your micro, your nano, your mega, etc., they're all based on increments going up by a factor of a thousand. So if a base unit is one, if we times that by a thousand, we get a thousand. Times that by a thousand, we get a million. Times that by a million, we get a billion. And going back the other way, from one, if we divide by a thousand, we get one thousandth. Divide that by a thousand, we get one millionth. Divide that by a thousand, we get one billionth. However, in everyday measurement, quite often we're interested in other values between one thousandth and a thousand. So we can add these in as well. We have times, you know, from one we can go ten times bigger, which is ten. Ten times bigger that is a hundred, and ten times bigger that is a thousand. One divided by ten is one tenth. Divided by ten again is one one hundredth. Divided by ten again is one one thousandth. And we're all pretty used to that type of counting on a number line. Now we bring in the base tens. One is represented ten to the zero. Ten is ten to the one. One hundred is ten to the two. One thousand is ten to the three. Times that by a thousand, we go up to ten to the six. So that you can see that every time we're increasing by a factor of ten from one to ten, we go from the index one a zero to the index one. We go up one from ten to one hundred. It's ten times bigger. That goes from the index of one to the index of two. 100 to 1,000 goes from 2 to 3. Now 1,000 to a million goes up by a factor of 1,000, which is three zeros, so it would go from 3 to the index of 6. And then a million to a billion is another 1,000 times bigger, three more zeros, so that goes from 6, adding 3 to 9. Working our way backwards, when we divide 1 by 10, we end up with 1 tenth or 10 to the negative 1. Okay, you increase by 10, you go up by a factor of 1. Decrease by 10, you go backwards to a negative 1. Then divide that by 10, we get 100, which is 10 to the negative 2. We've dropped down to negative from negative 1 to negative 2. Divide that by 10, we get 1,000, which is 10 to the negative 3. Divide that by a further 1,000, we go from 10 to the negative 3 down to 10 to the negative 6. And then the thousandth, uh, sorry, the millionth to the billionth, we divide by another 1,000, which is dropping the number from negative 6 to negative 9. All factors of 3s. Now, to make this easier in everyday measurements, we use prefixes. Alright, so if we're measuring something, and it's a 1, we don't have a prefix. We don't have to add anything on, it's just 1. Now, going up in the thousands. Times 1 by 1,000, we get 1,000. We call that a kilo. So 1,000 grams makes up a kilogram, for example. If we times that by another 1,000, we get 10 to the 6, and that's called mega. 
Okay, so mega, for example, mega volts is a million volts. And then finally, if we times that by a thousand, we end up with 10 to the 9, which is called giga. Now, giga might be gigabytes of a hard drive. Okay, these are everyday terms that we do use. If we divide by a thousand, we know that one meter divided into a thousand intervals is called a millimeter. A meter ruler divided into a million divisions is called a micrometer. And a million, uh, sorry, a single unit divided by one billion is called a nanometer. Okay. Now in between we have the less common, the deca. Okay, so you might have heard of decibels and hecto. Hectopascals is what we measure air pressure in. Deci, decimeter. And centi. Centi is now centimeters, a regular one. We use that a lot with our centimeters. We don't talk about decimeters. Ten centimeters represents a decimeter. We don't talk about that commonly. Now let's see how this looks with everyday applications. Oh, the symbol we have, by the way. So we know that a kilogram is a K, a mega is a capital M, a giga is a capital G, and so forth. And these are what we look at everyday measurements. So we know a millimeter, a centimeter, a micrometer, a kilometer, okay? They're all just using these symbols instead of the, the common prefixes. Some applications. So here's a complete listing of all the commonly used metrics prefix for our metric counting system. So when we've got one, there is no prefix. One tenth is a deci. One hundredth is a centi. One thousandth is a milli. Then we go to micro, nano, pico, all the way along. And then we're increasing in size. We go from one times that by ten is a deca times that by 10 again is a hecto, times that to a thousand gives me a kilo, then a mega, then a giga. We're commonly using those for um, storage capacity on computers. People use that type of terminology. Let's look at some examples. So the grams. We're used to things like a microgram, a milligram, if we're looking at active ingredients, say a medication, everyday grams, kilograms, if we're looking at a person's weight, megagrams, and we tend to talk in more common terms such as tons rather than megagrams etc okay? but that's how they're used in length we're used to measurements such as a nanometer a micrometer a millimeter a kilometer we don't tell about talk about megameters a great deal picometers getting super duper small that does get used these days as well though in scientific research liters a kiloliter okay a megaliter a gigaliter if we're talking about you know a massive volume of water maybe a pool or a lake, teroliters. We're used to mils, a milliliter, a microliter. If we look at bytes, we're used to talking about memory devices, a kilobyte, a megabyte, a gigabyte, a terabyte, and it keeps on going up. We don't really talk about millibytes, microbytes, nanobytes, etc. And finally, seconds. We tend to look at the lower fractions of seconds when we talk about seconds and milliseconds, microseconds, nanoseconds, picoseconds, maybe the speed of a processor might be using those terms. We don't tend to talk about kiloseconds and megaseconds because we increase units and go from seconds to minutes to hours to days to weeks to months, etc. Okay, so there are five different examples of how we're using a base unit such as seconds and then we add our prefix on the, f the front of that particular language. Let's look at some simple conversion. So if I want to convert 1.2 milliseconds into seconds, how do I do it? Well, ms, milliseconds, we can rewrite that as milli, and we can go to that table and see that milli is times 10 to the negative 3. It's actually a small fraction of a whole second. So when we've got 10 to the negative 3, we're going to move the decimal place to the left by 3. So we start with 1.2. We move it one decimal place to the left, it becomes 0.12. Two decimal places, 1, 2, becomes 0.012. Three decimal places, 1, 2, 3, becomes 0.0012. So that's what... Uh, 1.2 milliseconds back to seconds represents 0 0.0012 of a second. And here you can see, in a simple step, move the decimal place 1, 2, 3. We can add zeros in front of these numbers because they have no effect. Okay, And when we move the decimal place to three positions, we end up with 0 0.0012. Next example. If I want to convert 3.4 megabytes into bytes. Now we know megabytes and million bytes, so this is going to be quite a large number. Megabytes. We write that as a word, is megabytes. Now, mega means by 10 to the 6. So we need to move a decimal place, 6 moves this time to the right. So 3.4, moving it once becomes, moving it here becomes 34, twice 340, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so it ends up being 
3.4 million bytes, or 3.4 with five zeros. Looking at this, what we've done is moved our decimal place to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how we make that conversion. Next example, an everyday one, converting 7.5 kilometers into meters. This is one that we're used to on an everyday basis. We're used to a thousand meters making up a kilometer. We know that one kilometer is a thousand meters. We use this regularly. So 7.5 kilometers, in fact, ends up being 7,500 meters. Easy to use because we use this regularly. But using the same process, a K means a kilo, which is 10 to the plus three. So 10 to the plus three means we move the decimal place to the right three places. So 7.5 kilometers, moving it to the right, becomes a move to the right, becomes 75 after one, 750 after two, 7,500 meters after three, which is our correct answer. 7.5 kilometers equals 7,500 meters. A simple way to look at it, we're moving a decimal place one, two, three, and it ends up being 7,500 meters. Our final one, converting five microamps into amps. So micro, we write it as a word micro, we know that is equal to 10 to the negative six. It's gonna be a very, very small fraction, five millionths of an amp. Okay, so there's gonna be a lot of zeros in front of that five in the end. So 10 to the negative six means we're moving the decimal place six places to the left. Right, so moving it to the left, one, then two, then three, four, five, six. So five microamps is actually 0 0.00005 of an amp. Doing it in one simple step, we start here with the five, and we move the decimal place, one, two, three, four, five, six. All done in one step. This is showing you all the detailed steps. Look, I hope this has explained some level of explanation with our measurement system using um, our decimal system and prefixes. With practice, you'll get used to the prefixes. We use them a lot in physics from year 10, 11, 12, and beyond. Hope it helps. Practice, use the worksheet associated with this particular um, video, and yeah, do your best. Keep learning your physics. We'll see you next time.